Hello and welcome to Intuitive Nature, the podcast. My name is Susan Jane and I believe that trusting your intuition is the best way to live your life with meaning and purpose. Each week you will hear about how you can connect, develop and trust your intuition through meditations, readings and my own personal experiences. Join me to understand how your intuition can guide you towards a life full of meaning and loving purpose. Hey everybody, that's the first time I've seen that happen in front of me because we are doing interviews now. Um, I'm Susan Jane Intuitive, this is Intuitive Nature and we've got our second interview happening now with the lovely Melly Stewart. Now, she goes under the name of Melly S and she was a photographer and she's moved further forward in her career, in her um, understanding, and it's all because she's been following her intuition. Now, Melly's going to take us through that, so I'm not going to go right into it, but um, I want to know how things are going. Is this working out all right for you guys? Because um, I'm actually really enjoying it because I can play with these buttons on the side here and I can put videos up and all sorts of nonsense. So it's a great fun. But enough of that. Um, all right. So what I want to do is welcome Mally Stewart in and I'm going to click on the button so she comes here. Hey, Mally. Hello. How are you, beautiful? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Um, so welcome on board. Like the, I'm still getting used to this, so it is a little bit new and novel for me. So I, I hope you bear with me. But it's fun, um, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but what I'd love to do is, if you would wouldn't mind sharing a bit of your story about um, where you got to be, Melly Stewart, the story collector. Sure can. Um, well, where would you like to start? I guess is the question. Um, if we're going to talk about intuition. Would you like me to start where the start of my book started coming through? If you want to, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, guess, um, I guess when I look at it, I, I suppose with this podcast, it's all about helping um, other people understand their intuition and it's those little signs that we get and that little understanding that takes us forward. So what? What? what I want to know about you first because people want to know about you first and then I want to understand what were those little signs were that made you go this way? Okay, well, um, I guess I was like most women in that I was living the life everybody else wanted for me, uh, stuck in the hustle, trying to be a mum, run a business, working a couple of jobs at the same time, yet the whole time my intuition was telling me that this wasn't right. There was something not quite right with my life and I couldn't figure out what it was. Um, I was so stuck in the action, the constant movement that I never stopped long enough to figure it out. And it wasn't until the universe made me stop that I went, oh, hang on a second. I think I can see what's going on here. And for me, it was stepping back from what everybody else thought I should be doing, stepping back from everybody else's expectations and following what I felt was right for me. And to start with, what felt right for me was sitting in my backyard for almost nine months doing nothing, <laughs> just unravelling everything that I had been wrapped up in all my life. And you know what it's like yourself, Susan, that somebody gives you an expectation and until you're strong enough to go, no, that's not mine, mm. you do take it on as your own. Absolutely. Mm. And you said there was some sort of catalyst that made you go from um, being a mum, running a business, all that sort of stuff to sitting in your backyard for nine months. Like that's not something, that's almost like the guru going into the, um, the cave for nine years or something. When you're a mum and when you're trying to do all that, that, that is pretty phenomenal. What was that catalyst? What made you, you said you're following your intuition. What made you, I don't know, the trigger that did that for you? Well, the trigger for me was actually a miscarriage. So what happened was I was so busy, I wasn't paying attention to my own body and I didn't realise I was pregnant. So it was like this big smack in the face when the miscarriage happened because it was a big wake up for me. 
a wake up of you haven't been paying attention to yourself, you haven't been giving time to yourself and how did you miss such a vital sign that was happening within you, within my own little world. And it was that awakening. I'm so grateful for the fact it happened because without this child trying to come through me, I wouldn't have woken up. I would still be on that hustle train. I would still be living the life that I had before. I needed this little person to try and come through and go, oi, wake up and look at what's happening. And it was through that that the voice within me started stepping up. I like to call the voice within, that's my intuition, um, where some people like gut instinct, things like that. For me, I always say the voice within. <laughs> um, and that voice just got stronger and stronger. The longer I sat, the longer I dealt with my emotions, um, as you said, crawled into the cave, <laughs> which happened to be my backyard, <laughs> um, and just let all this stuff come out, the unravelling, all the stuff that I'd taken on as my own, which wasn't anything that no longer aligned, brought it up and out. And it left space yeah. then for my intuition to start talking. That's that's pretty incredible, you know, to, to go through all that and to have that understanding that it's safe to go into that area, into your cave, into that space and allow it all just to unfold because that's, yeah, that's huge. That's really huge. So you, you've you gone through this. It's like nine months, did you say? To It was almost like you were having a baby. It's it like felt like it. You were born. Yeah, yeah, by the end of it, I could look back and go, oh, hey, that was nine months. And wow. it didn't occur to me while I was going through it because each day just felt like forever. But when I looked back, I went, I am different and it has been nine months. <laughs> wow. That's, yeah, that is, that's quite, yeah, wow. Um, I've <laughs> never experienced a, a, a miscarriage, so I, I don't know what it's like. But, um, yeah, my heart goes out to you. I, I, the thought of losing a child, but... The, the weirdness of, of losing it when you didn't even know you were having it is probably even more challenging. So, okay, so you've gone through this. So this has been your big major life change. This has been a big aha moment for you. It, does, it doesn't have to be as dramatic as that. You can, we can have our aha moments anytime. But this was yours. And what did you do going forward then? So after that... It taught me to honour what was going on inside of me. It taught me to listen to what that voice within was actually saying. And a big part of it was then journaling. I'm an avid journaler. I write everything down. Um, so I was writing everything down as I was going through this process. And after the nine months, I felt compelled to write a book. It was like there had to be a purpose, a meaning for what I went through. And I could see that there was a very specific way I had dealt through my grief and gotten to the other side. So I wrote this book and went to release it into the world and my intuition went, nope, it's not this book, which was a really frustrating process after I've spent all this time putting a book together and then have it ready to go. And it goes, I don't need to laugh, Nelly, but I get where you're coming from. You Oh, I laugh now. Don't worry. I laugh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Been there, done that. Yep. Keep going. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the first book was like, oh, nope, it's there, but nope. Um, so I sidelined that and I just said, okay, well, what is the next thing? I know there's a book. I felt that. I've seen that in visions. What is that? And I started journaling again, but my journaling had changed. I wasn't writing stories from the past I wasn't writing out my feelings or trying to work my way through anything my journaling had changed to short poetry and it was very specific things that I was picking up in each of the poems um, and it progressed from there so that carried on for quite a few months not really sure what was happening was just enjoying that there was this more creative side of myself coming out um i'd always written poems as a kid but never really done anything with it especially when you get stuck in the hustle you lose those parts of childhood um and then yeah i think i'm trying to remember how long into it it was but there was a point within the journaling where i went why actually it was the beginning of this year it was the beginning of 2020 
that I went, well, what's this all mean? Why has all this come through me? Like, why is it all changed? And I got three words came through at that stage. Now, hang on, Melly. Hang on yeah. before you go any further. I, because this is what I've been talking about, and I want to, I want to keep that one going. This yeah. is what I've been talking about in the last couple of podcasts. I've been, I've been saying that um, we've got these three elements, ask, receive, and action. Now, what you were doing you for that nine months, you were asking. You were trying to get an understanding of where to go and what to do next. Then with your journaling, and I have written this down in the last podcast, your journaling, you, you, you're getting that information. You can meditate. You can journal. Whatever it is you, you are doing, you're getting that information. And then the last one is actioning. Now, you're just about to tell us about the actioning, so I'm going to get off and let you do that. <laughs> Thank you. It. I love that you were able to actually identify those steps because I never have. <laughs> um, so, yeah, when I got to this point, I kind of went, okay, well, what's this all for? And I got three words, princess, mother goddess, wild woman. And it's just three words, which I was like, okay, that doesn't really mean anything. And it took me a while to pinpoint what was happening and that the poetry that I had been I guess you could say channeling, inspired to write whatever words work for, for you guys. I'd been doing it for so long, I didn't know why. And it was like I had to get out the why out of the way in order to do it. Otherwise, it would have not contaminated but kind of changed the way I did it. Like my mind would have popped in and gone, no, there's a, I've got to do it this way to fit with this outcome. But because I didn't have an outcome, it just had to be what it was. So with those three words, I could look at what I'd done and gone, oh, I've actually written the steps people have to go through to get through what I call the princess phase, this phase of who we are where we're not taking responsibility for our own lives, that part where we unravel everybody else's expectations, which is what I'd gone through and had it all written out before me. But then with the miscarriage, there was that mother aspect of it as well, having to connect back with the earth and honour other people's journeys and give back to myself instead of always giving to others a hustle. And I'd written all that out too. I'd written the steps to get through that. But then it went even further because then there's that wild woman, that part where we've learnt those lessons and now we're kind of exploring what else is out there. We're exploring more of who we are. We're going back over the past and going, ah, oh, I should have taken responsibility there. I should have done that there. And I'm really angry that this happened in this place. And I'd written it all out. And it was interesting at that point looking back through it because I could see that my journey wasn't finished. And intuition pops up then and goes, you're correct, it's not finished. So what comes next? And then I got to step forward with the awareness of what was happening but still enough that I had to step aside and let it come through. So all that poetry that I'd been writing kept going. <laughs> it didn't stop there. <laughs> so, so, Melly, when you're doing it and you're, you've, you've got these three elements there, the, the princess, the mother and the wild woman, you're, you're getting all this information. So this is all still coming through in your journaling? Yes, correct. And so you're still asking for more and you're still receiving different information? Yes. How yep. long, how, what, what sort of a time frame was that? Is there an understanding to that or? I honestly haven't gone back to look at the exact time frame, but I would say it would have been probably 12 months from the okay. first journal and the first time it turned to poetry to yep. it all flowing through. Maybe it was nine months. It does seem to be a thing that happens in my life. So. <laughs> so, so when you're looking at, when you're doing this asking, you're, the, the things that you were doing was you, you were asking, but you were also allowing it to come through. You were allowing it to come through in the best manner that suited you, whereas yep. mine was meditation, yours was journaling. Yes. So, yeah, so you have allowed that to come through. So, and, and what I heard you say was that you didn't, have to have all the structure you just let it come through and it eventually found its own way yes yeah okay. i think if i had the structure first i it wouldn't look the way it does now yeah. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I'm a bit of a structure freak. <laughs> yeah, so 
And I think that's what happened with the first book. It was structure-based. Mm. What mm. came through next wasn't. It was that mm. surrendering to that magnetic side of who I am that wasn't all planning and I had to surrender to what came through. But yeah. then that allowed me to surrender to what came next as well. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so uh, actually what did come next? <laughs> um, so it was like the book, the writing of this book took me to a certain point and went, you've experienced all of this, now are you ready to experience what's next? And I kept getting this word, dark queen. It was like this calling that I had to go deeper. Like I'd spent this nine months in my cave, which is the backyard, but it was like that wasn't the full story. There was more to do. So I had to deliberately step into this dark queen again, this, this part where you kind of block out the world, where it's just you and your intuition. You can't see it. You can't grasp it. It's just there, which up to that point is what I'd done. I was just following this voice inside of me. What do you need me to do? Where am I going? Here's a word. Thanks. It means nothing, but I'll write it down. Maybe it'll mean something in the future. <laughs> <laughs> and that dark queen part of it, I got closer and closer every time. I could hear it and it was getting stronger and stronger. But every time it would get stronger, there would be something blocking it. And this time, instead of the stuff from the past, it was my own stuff that I found blocking it. So do you feel you're actually going through this, the, the um, that stage or that um, element yourself? Yes, yes. That was the interesting part. It wasn't just coming through. It was experiential at that stage as well. Wow. Which was really, really cool because every time I'd write something, I would either have experienced it or I was experiencing it in that moment. So as I went through, it was just getting closer and closer to what I call meeting your dark queen. So I say our intuition is a strength inside of us. Um, I know a lot of people like to refer to our intuition as this kind of wishy-washy, floating in the breeze, but to me, our intuition is this deep-seated strength within us. It knows everything. It's commanding. It wants respect. And it knows exactly what you need to do, but we need to listen to it and honour that <laughs> and not let the ego mind come in and go, no, you should be doing this because it's safest or because you'll get more rewards this way. Yeah, so yeah. Was, yeah, so getting to that point was quite exciting. <laughs> Okay, now, I because I, I know your book, um, I know what it's all about, so I'm just going to do a little bit of preempting here. <laughs> yes. so we've got the princess, we've got the mother, yep. we've got the wild woman, yep, and we've got the dark queen. Correct. Is there another one? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, before you explain the next one, I am going to put you up on the big screen so you can go through it and I want to put your book up as well. Is that okay? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Like I'm going to say no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here you are. Oops, Perfect. no, here I am. <laughs> here you are. Here is the, oh, what's it doing? <laughs> right. That's not going to work. Let me try this one. Hang on. There we go. There oh, we go. God. Perfect. <laughs> All right, so tell us about the fifth one. Okay, so the next step, after you've met your dark queen, met where your intuition comes from, you have this moment where you realise it is you. It's this really powerful moment where that voice within, you don't separate it as something else. You can see that it is you. It is this deeper sense of who you are that's guiding you through your life, that's dropping through all these bits of poetry all this time was always me. It wasn't something else or somewhere else. And then once you can embrace that, you kind of come out of the darkness again. You come out of this, the cave where the dark queen lives, that dark kind of space within us, and we step out as the sorceress. So I love this part of it. So we get to bring everything we've learned so far. We bring our princess, we bring our mother goddess, we bring our wild woman, we bring our dark queen, but they become the base for our sorcery, for our magic, 
to just be wielded out into the world. And I was lucky that once again, I had to experience that. I'd had the princess part. I'd had the mother goddess. I'd had the wild woman. I'd just been through this cave and met my intuition. And it was kind of like being pushed back into, out into the light as a brand new person. But with this conscious awareness of who you are and the impact you have in the world. And with that comes responsibility. Mm. You know then I'm playing victim in this moment. I'm being a princess. Am I going to continue doing this or am I going to do something about it? So so when you're going through that, Melly, like if you've got your five um, areas and the book's called Five Stages of or the Stages of Self, you've yeah. got those five areas. Um, I can I can sort of see that as a natural progression through life. Yes. If I'm at my sorceress, do I ever go back to the princess or do I ever go back to the wild woman? Oh, yes, big time. <laughs> <laughs> because, yes, it plays out in your entire life, but at the same time it can happen in certain elements of your life. It could happen. Oh, I've lost you. It could trigger you to the point where you revert. Oh, am I back? Yeah, your video was going a little bit funny. Can you just repeat that? Okay. A little bit? Yep. Yeah, no worries. Um, so, yeah, we can play out the cycle in our whole life, all the stages throughout our life. We could play out in certain areas of our life and we could play it out in one moment because of a situation. So somebody could trigger you and you could immediately revert to your princess and play victim and go, no, somebody rescue me from this. And then our mother goddess can step in and go, no, take responsibility. So then we take responsibility. Mother goddess steps up and goes, now I need to show myself some love through this. We find that love and then we get to step into our wild woman and go, I'm angry at myself because I did that, because I reverted back to the princess, but I know how to move through this. I'm going to release that anger and go, oh, I will do better next time. We step into our intuition and our intuition goes, there was a reason for that. Did you see the cycle? Did you see the lesson? You'd be like, oh, yes, thank you. <laughs> And then we get to step back into our power, get to step back into our sorceress. <laughs> so it's been really interesting watching it play out in my own life and now watching it play out in others' lives as well and seeing that all these stories I collected way back when, way back when I was off track, actually showed that I was on track. I was listening to my intuition, but I had more to learn before I could apply it as the sorceress. Ah. That's amazing. And I know that because um, we've talked before about this and I, I know that there was a lot of things that I did, um, you know, move, coming up to this stage. There was a lot of things that we, we did and we tried to get an understanding of. And I know that I tended to create something and then sort of dropped it and created something else and then dropped it and then created an, and it just... It was so frustrating because it always felt like you had to do something more, had to do something better. But now I sit back and with what I've got here, it's like all that stuff I've created, all of a sudden it's all here in front of me and I've got the ability to use that. And that's what it sounds like you've done with your book too. You've had all this learning and understanding and you've put it all together to help others. It's almost like we're unconsciously guided our intuition is always there. It's always telling us what to do, but we're unconscious about it. We do it because somehow, some way, the universe pushed us to do it. Yeah, but then yeah. we get to the end of our sorceress, it's no longer unconscious. It's very conscious that we're doing it. It's very much at the forefront of our mind. We're doing this for a reason. We're doing this to stay on purpose. We're doing this to help others. And I think that's the big difference and that's where we know we've done the stages of self because we can do it with the very conscious thought that we are doing this for a purpose. So even if we do go back into, say, the princess stage, like you said, we, can, we know we have that understanding of going through those stages and allowing it to, to be. Correct, correct. Yeah. So it never really ends. They're always there, but we do it with a different awareness. <laughs> yeah. 
All right, well, tell us a bit more about your book, where we can get it and um, what's, what's happening with it, where we're up to. Okay, so the book is now on pre-sale with expected release on the 13th of November, which is very, very soon. Um, and you can order your pre-sale at nellies.com.au. Well, actually, Melly, we are recording this. And so by the time this is put up, it, Ooh, it'll be ready to go. <laughs> it'll be ready to go. It'll be available. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, and if they're buying it on your website, which is down on the ticky tape down the bottom, um, do you sign it? Of course, of course. <laughs> um, so, Susan, we're talking about intuition. My intuition has come through very clearly in that this is the first edition. There is more to come. Um, okay. So I've had this intuitive knowledge that I need to review this book every year and adjust it every year. Um, as it is, some new poetry has come through for it for the next edition. Um, I started working with flower essences for my own development and have a feeling that's going to be brought into an edition at some point. Um, flowers so, have to be Melly. You know I'm the flower I know. <laughs> I know, I know. I thought it was funny when I'm seeing myself surrounded by flowers and I'm like, hang on a second, I know a lot of people who work with flowers, is that them? Or is that me? And then the intuition went both. <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah. next step. <laughs> oh, cool. Well, that's that's really good. And I know that um, when people purchase your book, they're going to get a lot out of it because I, I remember when we were talking about it and as, as we've discussed through it, I remember thinking how, um, how concrete, how secure it was and how easy it was to follow and understand these these stages that we go through and they're so relatable to us. Um, I just loved it. I love the concept and love the idea of it. And I think it's just going to go gangbusters. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I have to admit, I can't ca claim all the credit because it was inspired. It did come from intuition. Some of it was channeled from somewhere else, which I don't know where. <laughs> um, and it's, it's cool when you get to that place where you can just let it be what it needs to be. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, I, I understand what you're saying, but I also, well, my interpretation of intuition is it's that, that it's messages and information coming from our soul, from our spirit. Yep. Therefore, it may be coming from somewhere else and through, via us, but it still has to come via us. We still have to interpret those messages. Yes. So, yes, you may have got the little bit of a idea moments from somewhere else, but you need to take credit for it because it's brilliant. It, it's so, so good. I love it. Absolutely love it. Thank you. I will ponder that and um, do some more work on accepting and receiving. <laughs> <laughs> but I know where you're coming from. It's okay. Um, so is there, like, they can connect for the book on mellys.com.au, so Australian yep. Business. Um, is there other ways they can connect with you? Uh, yes, I'm on all the socials, so you're more than welcome. If you do Melly Stewart or Melly S, the story collector, um, I'm usually one of the first ones that pops up um, on all the socials. And I also run my own podcast called The Courage 1000 Project. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so that's that was the nice stories. Yeah, so that was the intuitive nudge once again. I had to do this project. I had to do this podcast. Um, had no idea where it fit in at the time. Let my mind lead the way. Jumbled it up for a little bit. Now that it's come back, intuition is leading. It feels much more grounded and much more on point. So it's all about showing women how to have the courage to take those next steps in life which comes back to intuition as well. So I have no doubt you will be on mine at some point soon. <laughs> <laughs> and i tell you what, what I'd love to do um, as, as your book is progressing, I would really love to get you back on the show and just run through those five elements, those five stages individually. So just, just talk about the princess stage. And we go yep. through the positives, we go through the negatives, we go through the intuitives and we go through everything. So we, we do, if, yeah, we, if we do each stage um, and that gives my listeners 
um, an understanding of, of what it's all about. But um, they'll get that real clear understanding of it. So, yeah. Would you please come back? No, never. <laughs> I <would> come back. <laughs> Now, um, is there anything else you want to finish off? Because we, we, we're we just about on, oh, we just hit the, the 30 minute mark, and that's probably, I tend to talk too much otherwise. <laughs> anything else you want to put forward, Mel? Um, well, if we've got two seconds, yeah. I'll pull a card and we'll see what message we've got for your audience. Oh, that's cool. Sounds great. Let's see what animals have a message for your people. Okay. I'll, um, I'll put you back on full screen. Thank you. Oh, okay, we've got two, three, no, four popped out. So we have four messages for your listeners right now. So with whatever's going on in your life and whatever just popped to the forefront of your mind, Groundhog is reminding you that it's time to let go. So whatever's happening, let it go. Same thing like I was saying with the Courage 1000 project, I had to let it go until it found its place. So same sort of thing could be popping up for you. Um, skunk is a reminder to know your worth. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I was getting a bit worried then. <laughs> so, that was you too. Hey? That was you too. Yes, that was my journey, was learning to know my yeah. worth. Yeah. So that's the whole point of the skunk. It stinks, but it knows it stinks, and it's okay with that. <laughs> Um, you've also got a reminder to give and receive gratitude. So there's that turkey spirit coming up. I just realised what these are. What's these that? are your ask, receive, take action. Ah, oh, there you go. Because the final one is owl spirit. You see clearly now. Oh, I love the owls. Yeah. So the owl is kind of the result of once you've worked with your intuition, you see clearly. Yeah. So run the the, three, the four again. It was groundhog, let go. Groundhog, let go, which yep. I would say is the receive. Yeah. Let go, get your mind out of the way. Skunk spirit, know your worth. Yeah. And then turkey, give with gratitude and grace. Oh, so yeah, that sounds good because I would look at the um, the groundhog as um, let go. It is let go of any preconceived ideas. Let's just oh, become, yeah. become open to receiving. Yes. Um, so let go of any preconceived ideas. Then we went into the skunk, which is know your worth. Yeah, so if you're letting go of any what I'm supposed to be doing and just allowing your worth to come through, um, yeah, that's going to happen. Gratitude, of course, we just can't go without gratitude. And and the same thing for the little things, not just the big things, those little things. Um, yes. just, just getting the right card. And then the owl, well, yeah, owl, owl is definitely secret. I love the owl. I love that. I love that it kind of confirms what we were just talking about it too. It does. That is fantastic. All right, Melly, I'm going to have to say goodbye. We've got to um, close this off because I definitely talk way too much. <laughs> no, your worth. It's part of who you are. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I hope you've enjoyed it, everyone. I'll just pop my, myself back on again. Oh, and one more little uh, reminder, the book. You can pick that up at Melly s.com.au just jump on board there and you can um, purchase the book and you can get it signed by Melly. Um, I am Susan Jane I just want you to all to remember that we are all naturally intuitive it's part of human nature it is our intuitive nature and that's me for today I hope you've enjoyed it look forward to having Melly back on again and we'll go through those stages individually I think you'll really enjoy that all right that's for me so I'm going to say bye for now see you later <laughs>